Paradox has been hiding things from you. Sounds really dramatic when I put it like that. Anyway, there's a horde that you can form in EU4 that I've not seen anyone really discuss, so today I thought I'd show you how to play as one of the least played nations in EU4. This isn't a nation that you can form with a decision, but you can make the decision right now to leave the 70% of people who aren't subscribed and join our little cult. If you like this video as well, I'm legally allowed to promise you rewards in the afterlife. No seriously, I'm legally allowed to do that. Now we've sorted out your eternal rewards, we can move on to forming the strangest horde in the game. Right, so the nation I'm going to form today is a lot simpler, thank god, than the other ones I've done recently on the channel. But I thought I'd draw attention to it because not many people know it actually exists. So, to start off with, you need to pick a Tibetan miner. I'm going to pick Sang, just because I like the colour. Right, and the first thing is to unify Tibet. A statement that's guaranteed that I'm now on a Chinese list of some kind. Ooh, a 242 siege? This is, this is going to be easy. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, um, why fight many wars when you can fight one war with many people? Yes, I did just declare war on what, four nations? Oh, five, good, right, well, let's <laughs> handle this, shall we? Nice little stack right there, thank you very much. I'm just going to try and rush down these forts. All right, let's go take this fort. Please don't lose, please. Thank you, and thank you, right. Okay, double stack wipe. Right, now I need to take out Kham or Kham or however you want to pronounce it as quickly as I can before the hordes come back. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Um, I, you know what, slipping into tutorial mode for a second, if you actually end up doing this, um, I advise not declaring war on every single neighbor you have, uh, immediately. Maybe wait for a little bit, um, take them piecemeal. This wasn't smart. I'm quickly going to interrupt the video to talk about today's sponsor. I know you've already heard of Raid Shadow Legends, but on the off chance you haven't, Raid Shadow Legends is a mobile turn-based battle MMORPG, or as I like to call it, a bloody good time. I'm personally a big fan of the animations in this game and the fact that it doesn't shy away from intensity. I mean, look at this woman. She got cocky and was just eaten by a dragon. Doesn't really get much more intense than becoming dragon food. So how do you avoid being eaten by a dragon? Simple. Take your champion and head over to the tavern. There you can sacrifice fellow, innocent, champions and absorb their strength which is how I typically interact with new people anyway. From there, you can make your way through the campaign and take out all of the big bad guys along the way, ostensibly to save the day, but really to try and block out the unrelenting guilt of devouring those other champions. But what's that? You're a fan of seasonally themed updates? With Halloween right around the corner, I feel like it's a great time to rank Raid's best Halloween champions. Let me show you some of them. First up, we've got Harvest Jack. Look at that handsome smile. 8 out of 10. Someone who isn't smiling is the Lost Bride, who unironically reminds me of my nursery teacher, and so puts the fear of God into me, resulting in a 9 out of 10. However, my favourite Halloween champion is Mars Fearmonger. I mean, he does exactly what he says on the tin. He's got a mask, and those cleavers aren't just for show. That's not all. This month, Raid's got a non-stop schedule of special events and activities, including a jam-packed Halloween lineup towards the end of the month. We're talking huge rewards, tournaments against other players, special fragment events to get some brand new legendary champions, and much more. Let me sweeten the deal for you. Scan that QR code with your phone right now and you'll get access to 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and an ancient shard which will give you a huge head start. Not only that, you'll get the epic hero Chinoru just because we feel like it. All of this will be waiting for you right here for a limited time of 30 days for new players. Thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. But neither's walking into a mountain fort whilst I'm standing right there. The amount of stack cards. I wonder how many casualties I've dealt. Here we go. How many have I killed? Like 32,000. Jesus Christ. All right, well that's our eastern neighbor there dealt with. Gooch, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go siege down Gooch. Instability. This is going well so far. The reason I declared war on all these nations at once is because uh, I have a better siege general than the rest of these guys. Uh, and siege is what wins wars. So that's essentially it. Because I can take this faster than they can take my capital. Uh, and at this stage of the game, it really, really doesn't matter too much uh, <laughs> about occupations or loans or war exhaustion or rebels. Right, and there goes Gouge. Yeah, provided they're not taking my capital, I really don't care what they're doing. It's amazing because my war score is constantly negative, uh, and yet I'm slowly winning. Peace offer from you. I will cede all this stuff to you. Yes, you're right. You are the one that's winning. Mm -hmm. I've been warned by the Timurids. I don't even know who you are. But why? I've been warned by Bengal and the Timurids. Guys? One of the downsides of, uh, of expanding this quickly uh, in a death war is obviously the peasants and stuff rising up. 
as well as probably particularists later, uh, and all these other separatists. But that's fine. That's why I hired the free company. I'm going to go into a lot of debt just to deal with it all, because afterwards I'm going to sit at peace for a little while. It's just this way, I didn't risk them getting lots of different alliances. It's a little bit tricky, and you're more likely to lose than not, but if you can pull it off, it's quite a neat little trick. And there's that done. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to unite West and Tibet. A war exhaustion is almost 20. Um, fine. Well, absolutely become a tributary. Thank you very much, Ming. I appreciate the offer. And that's us forming Tibet. I reckon I could have submitted that as a speedrun, you know? <laughs> Invite a llama. I really, I don't know why. I stared at that for a while thinking it was the animal. I really was very excited about this event. Right. I've, I now have a llama. Now, ordinarily, I'd recommend you to recover at this point, but if you see an opportunity like this, you kind of got to take it. I'm curious as to how many of you actually know how to form this horde, though. Because otherwise, you just see me form Tibet, and you're sitting there thinking like, oh, it's Tibet. <laughs> that's, the, that's the nation he's talking about. It's not. It's a horde. We can become a theocracy. I mean, I don't really care either way. I'm just going to take the stability for now. All right, and with that, we've united Eastern Tibet. Now we need to embrace feudalism to actually unite Tibet, despite the fact that you know, weird to bet. What do you do now? Well, you pay off your loans if you have them. <laughs> and you settle down and try and get feudalism. Alright, and once you have enough money for feudalism, you gotta embrace it, and then you get to do this. <laughs> Unite to bet. I promise the nation is actually really cool, don't worry about it. So now, for this stage, which we need to complete this mission to, uh, to form this nation. We need an ally with at least 100 development and part of the um, Altaic culture group, or we just need to own 10 of those provinces. So I'm going for Oirat right now. They have 100 development, literally just about. I mean, I rivaled the Timurids and I just saw that it said that it had, what, minus 7% of my army? That's, that doesn't bode well for them. Oh, meanwhile, Rhea lost the war to Jianzhou. I've genuinely never seen them lose to the Jianzhou before. Okay, so I'll leave you guys in peace. Minus 14, come on. Oh, what's that? The main defender against being in the main conquest of Alaxa. I might have to find myself a new ally. For those of you wondering, the uh, Altaic uh, culture group is everything this kind of color. Uh, so I'd probably have to expand north if I was just going to fight them. All right, I said I, I know I said I'd calm down, but uh, it's a sickness, okay? I, I can admit that. Oh man, times are not looking good for Oira. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm going to get my hundred development uh, ally. From, from here. Also, ignore the fact that Caradel doesn't exist anymore. I told you I have a problem! I'm constantly sitting at minus 90 karma, which I feel is a more of a reflection of my current existence in real life versus in the game. But, it's fine. I mean, that, that decision just made financial sense. That was... Fine, fine, I'll go, I'll go try and form the nation now, okay? I'm done with the senseless conquest. Probably. Well, well, there's there's that war, and Uzbek is now a neighbor of mine. Oh, well, see if Uzbek wants to be my ally then. I'm outnumbered, but mm, two of his three allies won't come in, so... Good to see how it goes. That's a mountain fort. Uh-oh. Oh, oh boy. You disloyal? Just about. Jesus. All right, well, let's... Yeah, let's go, then. Okay, I need ten provinces, and I have two. So... If my math is correct, I need eight provinces. Oh, I have four. So my mass was... <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I only need six. Great job, Lee. We'll go, Lee. Just stay right over there and we'll be fine. No one has to get hurt. You want to fight? That's a lot more men than I was expecting. Go to the earth, boys. Get off the mountain provinces. I'll deal with you in a second. Just hold on. Oh my god. Oh, well, that was amazing. God, his troops are so bad. Why? Golia, don't suddenly become loyal, please. You're at minus, you're at, you're at 76%, all right? Just don't become loyal. And we, we both get out of this, fine. Watching the Earth is so underrated. Four provinces, but I'll take a fifth just to be safe. In fact, mm, hmm, it doesn't help me directly, but it always feels wrong to not 100% win a war, you know? I've got a regency now. Okay, well, in which case, we are definitely staying in this war. Or is making gains. Where are you making gains? Where do you see these gains, Oirut? Right, these are all in the Altaic culture group, which is good, and I think I'll just take that. Thank you very much. 
Now, what does this mean? This means we can take this decision, which is meeting with the Khans. Where we can either... Oh, get some slight opinion, or we could form Kalka or Koshud. What is the difference between the two? No, I mean that as a question. What is, what is the difference between the two? Because I don't know. Let me show you both of them. So this is Kalka. Nice little color there. Decent flag. And uh, we're a horde. So I can go and raise all these provinces that I just conquered. Which is pretty cool. Um, it also means we trigger the event with me. And it's a really strange color. I've never seen like a pale orange before. That's cool. Um, but here's the other nation. Same color. Same everything else. Just the slightly different flag. Apparently is the difference between the two of them. <laughs> Why are they the same color? I'm gonna go with Kalka, just because uh, I prefer the name. That's, I mean, there's no reason to not. It's the only difference. So what do you do once you're a Tibetan horde? Well, firstly, you raise everything. We get claims around here, which is kind of cool. You also do this. Gives you a bunch of claims. And there's the whole Dalai Lama taking control thing, but we already did that. So it just gives you loads of claims on China. I don't know why supporting the school just makes it such that you have claims on China. But I'm not complaining. I know what you're thinking. As a horde, are you able to take on a nation that's what, like three times your size and has superior numbers? Well, let's find out. Because there's something about being a horde and this religion. Which means that, well, you could just stack white people because you have almost 115% discipline. And there's nothing anyone can do to stop you. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's so ridiculous. I've killed 24,000 troops in that time. Also, this land is flat land, so you get the typical horde bonuses. Also, why you're doing really well. And you're really nicely placed to go into India. And all of this rich land up here is flat lands. Oh, man. Beagle Horde is amazing. I think the conclusion to that is uh, that absolutely you can. Raise it, you can concentrate the land, and why not do it again? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh man, I highly recommend you try out this nation, it's it's a lot of fun. Also, I've been exposed as a fraud because I said I've never seen a nation with this colour before. Right next to Tripura, who has pretty much the exact same colour. But what being a horde also means is that if you cancel a tributary with Ming, they start to get the unguarded frontier. Um, issue. But my advice would be to stay as, as Ming's tributary for a while because people then can't attack you. Um, <laughs> look at the coalition. These guys might all want to attack me, but I'm guarded by Ming, so you can conquer the entirety of India whilst Ming is helping you out. Oh, Manchu formed. That's kind of cool. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is a secret uh, horde that you might not have known about. Um, if you want more of these kinds of videos, do be sure to like and subscribe. It shows us that this is the kind of content you like to see. If you have any suggestions or anything else in the comments down below, then I'll be sure to read them. In any case, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.